welcome all so this video is basically a request video i'll be talking about mary wollstone crabs a vindication of the rights of women this is the first video on the topic and here i'll follow the usual drill that is positing the text in the intersection of literature and history in the second video i intend to speak on the content of the first two chapters and also discuss the related themes so let's begin Wollstonecraft's vindication was published in the year 1792 so before we move on to the discussion proper i'd like you all to know that this text is not the first of its kind for the english literary history narrates a protofeminist lineage which perhaps facilitated Wollstonecraft's taking up the position that she takes in context of women's right in her work though of course it cannot be considered as a direct influence Here on screen I have some of the names of the writers who wrote before Wollstonecraft. The first name that you can see is of Catherine of Aragon who was queen of England from 1509 to 1533. Though she don't have any writing to her credit, but she had commissioned a book titled The Education of a Christian Woman by J. L. Vives where Vives had argued about the right to education for women. The second name is Batsua Makin who lived between 1600 and 1675. She had contributed to the emerging criticism of women's position in the domestic and public spheres in 17th century AD. In her essay an essay to revive the ancient education of gentle women in religion manners arts and tongues with an answer to the objections against this way of education She had argued primarily for the equal right of women and girls to obtain education. The third in the list is Mary Astle, who is intellectually indebted to Makin and is considered as the first English feminist. She has written on themes of education and marriage. In her 1694 publication, A serious proposal to the ladies for the advancement of their true and greatest interest published in the year 1694 she presents a plan for an all female college where women could pursue a life of the mind so by now i believe you all have understood that the theme or position that ulstonecraft takes up in a vindication is not a new one so the question arises is that why is the text important or Finally, was the reason of Wollstonecraft's fame about the reception of the text post publication? Let me inform you that the Analytical Review, the Journal Magazine, the Literary Magazine, New York Mag- Magazine, the these were the magazines of that time, the ones who were running, the ones who were in fame. They reviewed this work very favorably. A second ed- edition was almost immediately released. several american editions also appeared and it was also translated into french now to get back to the question that i have raised the single precise answer that can tie all the answers into a single string would be french revolution we will discuss that within a few minutes but let's first try to trace the evolution of a pro- proto feminist mind in wollstonecraft The first influence that that can be pointed at is the emergence of enlightenment ideas during the 17th and 18th centuries in Europe and especially in context of Wollstonecraft's work the philosophies of the English philosophers John Locke and Thomas Hobbes become important Locke in his 1690 publication Essay Concerning Human Understanding describes mind at birth as tabula rasa which is filled later through experience this is does an attack on the doctrine of innate ideas proposed by plato and descartes as per which mind is already born with ideas knowledge and beliefs thus locke's idea facilitated the removing of the shackles of innate nature and innate tendency that came with gender thomas hobbes in his work Leviathan published in 1651 developed some of the fundamentals of european liberal thought such as the right of the individual the natural equality of all men 
the artificial character of the political order etc so this worked as the philosophical background of the work now i will talk about the position of women in the age to which wollstonecraft belonged women during those days had no rights literally they were not allowed to vote not allowed to own properties and after marriage they were not supposed to work w l bleese writes about the 18th century women that a respectable woman was nothing but the potential mother of children women had no freedom and were infantilized they even could not leave the house alone without being considered a prostitute since the only future of girls were as housewives they were educated at home by their mothers marriage was their only option though that didn't improve their state or position in this context w l bleese again points that the idol of marriage had been brought to its lowest possible level it emphasized the sexual side of the connection and almost entirely disregarded the spiritual so you can well understand that women during the 18th century had no hope at all and it needs no further explanation that it's not something that a liberal mind like wollstonecraft can accept now why i call her a liberal mind i shall explain now even before her entry into the literary scenario her consciousness about women issues are evident her father edward john wollstonecraft was an abusive man and as a teenager she used to lie outside the door of her mother's bedroom to protect her she was also not happy with the disparity that she faced in context of her education her older brother ned received an extensive formal education whereas mary spent just a few years in a day school the third important element of her life is a friendship with fanny blood Not only did she open with Fanny and her two sisters a small girls school but she also dreamed of a female utopia with blood of renting a flat of living together something similar to lesbian continuum that Adriana Ridge speaks of but both of this that is the school and the dream shattered on account of economic reasons she was also devastated on account of Fanny's death in 1785 and that was part of the inspiration for her novel mary a fiction wollstonecraft was also a norm breaker which clearly portrays her liberal, liberal mind her sister eliza in 1784 was suffering from postpartum depression it was wollstonecraft who made arrangements for her to flee leaving her husband and infant she was a liberal mind no doubt but on account of her close contact with intellectuals of the age her intellectual horizon expanded she was influ- influenced by intellectuals like richard price thomas jefferson benjamin franklin but it was after the publication of her first book thoughts on the education of daughters that she formally entered into the intellectual circle joseph johnson published her work and post publication she met and shared ideas with radical thinkers like thomas paine William Godin Anna Barbold at the weekly dinners at Johnson's you can see in the screen that Anna Barbold's name is underlined this is to bring to your knowledge a point that she was a member of blue stocking society the blue stocking society was an informal women's social and educational movement in england in the mid 18th century emphasizing education and mutual cooperation So it's not surprising that Wollstonecraft wrote about rights and equality in vindication for it evolved out of a strong personal intellectual and philosophical grounding. Now it's time to talk about French Revolution which is both a background and a reason for the name and fame of Wollstonecraft and the text. French Revolution began in 1789 which had equality as its key principle. I'll not discuss French Revolution in details but will point an incident. In October 1789, as a result of the demand of the abolishing of the ancient regime, the royal family was marched from Versailles to Paris by a group of angry housewives. Now, women had no political right in pre-revolutionary France, 
and were considered as passive citizens. But as an impact of the revolution and on account of a broad demand for social and political reform, feminism emerged. Women were turning conscious of their rights and were turning demanding. The incident of the angry housewives also narrates their taking of power in their own hands. So what happened is women demanded equality to men and their chief vehicle for agitation were pamphlets and women's club especially the society of revolutionary republican women so it can be said that french revolution both facilitated ulstonecraft's mindset for writing the book and also was well received for penning down the contemporary con- consciousness the second point that i would like to draw your attention to is a direct influence of the text and also the reason of the text's importance it was a debate over the french revolution termed as the revolution controversy lasting from 1789 through 1795 it began with edmund burke's reflections of the revolution in france published in the year 1790 which was a response to the defending of french revolution that richard price did in his sermon entitled a discourse on the love of our country Now, Park was a part of the Liberal Whig Party, a critic of monarchy, a supporter of the American revolutionaries and a critic of government corruption in India. And so it was expected of him that he would support the French revolutionaries. But Park in his reflection predicted a disastrous end of the revolution because of its abstract foundation and spoke for tradition and prejudice. He pointed that liberty and rights could be easily abused to justify tyranny. As a response to this, Wollstonecraft published a vindication of the rights of men in the year 1790, where Wollstonecraft made Price, that is Richard Price, his hero, connecting him with reason, liberty, free discussion, mental superiority and the rejection of power and riches. Now in this work She invoked an emerging middle class ethos in opposition to what she views as the vice-ridden aristocratic code of manners. Moreover, she redefined Burke's gendered idea of sublime and beautiful, where sublime is considered masculine and beautiful feminine. Wollstonecraft differing says, "For truth in morals has ever appeared to me the essence of the sublime, and in taste simplicity the only criteria of the beautiful now this discussion and defense ulstonecraft extends in a vindication of the rights of women where passionately in support of the revolution's ideals she went farther and claimed equality for her sex for she considered the french revolution as a glorious chance to obtain more virtue and happiness now our entire discussion will remain incomplete if i don't refer to charles steria perigo charles steria perigo's 1791 report to the french national assembly stated that women should only receive a domestic education ulstonecraft launches a broad attack on such a double standard and does the text vindication begins with a letter to steria where she writes Having read with great pleasure a pamphlet which you have lately published I dedicate this volume to you So does it can be summed up that vindication was a product of a liberal mind and also of the time where Wollstonecraft responded to the conservative educational and political theorist of the 18th century who believed that women should not receive a rational education Vindication is the voice of a woman desiring equality and liberation in a period when feminism was still not an everyday term which hence clarifies the importance that it holds so this brings us to the end of today's discussion hope you found this enriching thanks for joining